it is full moon Monday. I hope everybody had a good weekend. The weekend is uh, continuing because it's Martin Luther King Day and it's a holiday here in the in the United States anyway. Uh, I'm going to just talk briefly this morning. My talks have been pretty long lately. So uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about spirits. Are they real? Are they imagined? These are real. These illusions. I am of them false or frail, true or lasting. All is fusion in the spirit's shadow veil. This is, I'm showing you this because uh, this is a, a sigil of the Goetic spirit, uh, Orobos, or at least that's the, the standardized, corrupted uh, uh, spelling and pronunciation of the name of the spirit. Uh, it's one of the, the, the 72 uh, spirits of Solomonic magic or uh, Goetia. I'm showing you this uh, beautiful little uh, medallion because on the other side of it is the pentagram. Now this, these dual images are placed around the neck of the, of the magician when evoking the individual spirits. Now there's another seal that's placed inside the triangle. Okay. The, uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because the magician is never separated from the spirit and the spirit is never separated from the magician and this is proving it to both of them. I take a lot of grief. Oh, well, not grief. I, I'm just too insensitive to, to uh, uh, take grief, but I, I get a lot of flack from magicians about my statement, it's all in your head, you just have no idea how big your head is. Uh, big your head is. And they seize on that quote uh, as if it's a crystallized uh, uh, thought that I am denying the, the reality of spirits. Uh, are the spirits objective reality or are they just subjective? Well, Duquette says they're subjective because he says they're all in your head. Just have no idea how big your head is. Wrong. That's not what I'm saying. The key is in you don't know how big your head is. And in that, I'm trying to get across the idea that as you identify with higher and higher levels of consciousness, as you, as you grow into the various initiatory degrees as, say, represented by the, the 10 sephiroth of the tree of life or the 30 aethers or, or any other uh, way you would like to uh, demarcate your Jacob's ladder of consciousness. Uh, there comes a time when you realize that the you that is really you is so big that it encompasses everything. So in other words, you wake up to realize your objective reality is really bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it is universal. Sooner or later, you, you realize that there's, there's an absolute merging between your macrocosmic pentagram and your your microcosmic pentagram and your macrocosmic hexagram. And that would be the illumination of uh, Tifereth or the, the Holy Guardian Angel. Okay, 
you realize you're much bigger, but they'll eventually come an awakening where you realize there is no differentiation even in concept. There is no duality, beyond duality. And it's from that point of view that ultimately you can say, it's all in my head. Because you're identifying with that level of consciousness that is so universal that you can say that. Until then, the magician works with concepts as if there's separation. There's me, there's the spirit, there's me, there's the angels, there's me, uh, 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 there's me and it's. But ultimately, when you know how big your head is, there is no me and you, okay? So, I got a couple of little things uh, taken from one of my favorite books that nobody has, Ask Babylon. Um, and I'm just going to uh, give you a couple short answers and then we're going to get on with our day and get on with our week. Uh, are angels real? Okay. Uh, and it's a question that I get a lot. Are angels and spirits uh, real? Uh, and it's a very, very good question. I won't read the, the entire question, but the b bottom line is uh, this uh, challenging me on this objective subjective thing here. Uh, and I give a glib, quick answer, but I think it says a lot. Dear Name Withheld, are these entities real, quote, real? Can they knock over a lamp? No. But they can frighten you so much or fill you with so much ecstasy or make you laugh so hard or make you see wonders beyond your imagination or shock you with embarrassing insight about yourself, or otherwise startle you out of the sleepy dream world you think is reality, that you piss your pants, jump up, and knock over a lamp. That's my, that's my answer to, to that one. Okay, here's a here's a uh, another another one, uh, and the the question is actually uh, uh, a person that wanted to talk about commanding the archangels. Uh, here's someone who's been regularly doing the uh, later uh, the greater ritual of the pentagram and the lesser ritual of the pentagram, and uh, He's got all these archangels, and he wants these archangels to do chores for him if they're so powerful. And uh, uh, here's just part part of my uh, my answer. Uh, first of all, don't worry about seeing angels, spirits, elementals, etc. Proceed as if you did. Now, I'm, the whole reason I'm bringing up this subject is because somebody yesterday or the day before uh, asked me this, this question. I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm visualizing, but I don't actually see them. Okay, how, how many years do I have to practice the pentagram ritual before I can see the, the, the archangels? Don't worry about not seeing them. Angels, spirits, elementals, proceed as if you did. Now, I say this. If you could hear them talking to each other, they might be saying something like, 
don't move. He can't see us, so he doesn't believe we're here. I hope he doesn't write Duquette. Proceed to work without seeing them and focus on the effects of your working. As far as commanding the archangels in the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, where the fuck in the LBRP does it say anything about commanding the archangels to do anything? They come when they are called because they are already there. The same thing goes for God. Face east and everywhere in the universe that's in front of you is Raphael. Where an archangel is concerned, it's you who needs to impress him by showing him you recognize his position in the magical universe. Command him? Command him to do what? Bring you money? Get you a girlfriend? Harm an enemy? Those are chores for beasties dramatically lower on the spiritual totem pole. With all due respect, you have to get it straight what you're trying to do with these rituals and what the hierarchy of spirits is really about. Just keep plugging away and try not to overthink things. After all, this is a spiritual science. Whenever you think you haven't made any magical progress, just ask yourself, where was I a year ago or two years ago? Was I more magical then? I can almost guarantee your answer will always be no. Okay. That's my little talk about the objective subjectiveness of uh, of the spirits. Part of the art and science of magic is behaving, at least for the duration of your ceremonies and workings, that they are very objectively real. Because on one level, they absolutely are. And they're all in your head. You just have no idea how big your head is. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.